So um, our first speaker is Evine Kishanak. Um, so Evine has a BA in International Relations and Pol Political Science at Istanbul Bilgi University. She's currently studying for her master's degree in Human Rights Law at Istanbul University. And over the last eight years, she has worked voluntarily in different NGOs and projects, mainly concerned with reconciliation, peace and justice, um, such as the Karakutu Association and memorialization projects for and with young people. Um, they also work to learn, um, they also work to create lessons from the past. Um, and it's an association that believes that remembering the past plays an essential role in justice and peace. Avin volunteered um, at the Truth Justice Memory Centre, and this organisation works to uncover the truth concerning past violations of human rights, strengthening the collective memory about those violations and supporting survivors for their pursuit in justice. Um, they also bought the ZAN Institute for Social, Political and Economic Studies. As such, they also published um, the journal, they also published in the Journal of Society and Theory. Avin has organized panels for the ZAN Institute and has worked for the journal and set up a scholarship project for students from poor backgrounds wanting to study social sciences. Her research interests are Kurdish women's movement, gender studies, civil war and conflict studies. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Avin. Um, hi to everyone. <laughs> thank you. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me in such a this beautiful, amazing meeting. Um, I'm excited actually. <laughs> I hope there isn't be too much language issue. Um, first of all, I would like to tell something about my mom for that who don't know her actually. Uh, she is in prison right now. Uh, she was born in Edazil in 1961. She started uh, her political activities during high school years, actually, in 1970s. While, she, while the Kurds were not being recognized as a distinct ethno-national group in Turkey. Then she enrolled education faculty at Dijli University, which is in the Arbukur, but she had to drop because of her improvement during that military coup d'etat in 1980s. And she spent two and a half years in the Arbukur military prison of five, uh, which is known as one of the most notorious prison ever existed in the world, actually. After she was released, uh, she studied journalism and public relations at the Ege University in Izmir. And she worked in a variety of positions, ranging from news correspondent to editor in chief in several news newspapers, including Yeni Ülke and Özgür Gündem. And she was at the same time, she was one of the pioneering figures in women's liberation movement in 1990s. Uh, then when Kurdish parties were allowed by central government to take part in municipal elections by 1990s, those, she started to work as a social services advisor in Balar district, the most poorest area in Ahmed in the Arbukur. And she coordinated a number of social projects uh, towards empowerment of women. And she then successfully ran for parliament election in 2007 as an independent candidate, backed by pro Kurdish party. And then she went to the National Assembly for two terms. And she was the co chair of the uh, BDP, which is Peace and Democracy Party, pro Kurdish party. She was the uh, with uh, Demirtas co chair of party for four years. But then it, in 2014, there was another uh, local election. She was elected uh, as the co mayor of the Arbukur for first time, female mayor elected at that year. Uh, 34 years later, she was elected as a mayor of that city in which she was subjected to the most uh, horrible torture, actually. So that's why it was a kind of milestone, I think, for me, for Kurdish women, for the struggle. 
uh, it was really strong message actually. But then uh, after failed coup attempt in July 2016, uh, Turkey entered the declared the state of emergency and Ankara, which is center of bureaucracy, appointed the trustees to more than 90 municipalities and arrested the democratically elected mayors and member of parliaments. Also my mother arrested in October 2016 and kept in Kojeli F-type prison. Uh, F-type prison mean is very, very high security prison, which that's, um, which mean it's, uh, there is lots of uh, human rights violation happening each day, each week, and now also uh, political prisoners started another hunger strike actually. Uh, but as a result of investigation conduct on my mother, just 21 page uh, indictment was prepared in uh, November 2016, lawsuit demanding 230 years of imprisonment of my mom. Uh, statements made in various states, marches, participated, press releases, social media posts, etc. like when she was talked on 8th March uh, of Women Days, um, Nevro celebrating days, uh, almost to each uh, speech she had, they opened the case against her. Uh, so, uh, also, um, the chief judge was changed more than four times. Uh, at every hearing, there was a new group of judge and every time my mother and lawyers had to start the defense from the beginning. Of course, all of us know, but sadly, the judiciary has been used as an instrument to advance political agendas in Turkey. Um, like during last uh, hearing, also the court ruled to keep my mother in prison again. Uh, in itself, actually, put my mother in prison in Kojeli and sending the case to Malatya because of the security reasons is uh, punishing all my mother, lawyers, family, because all the cities are far, far from each other. And I'm really facing different human rights violations almost each time when I'm trying to visit my mom. Uh, for instance, uh, last time I wanted to give an address to my mother during a prison visit, which were sent to my mother from a group of women from Bodrum. But authorities said that the fish patterns on the dress pose risk. <laughs> so probably the aim is to prevent political propaganda, but how can fish be made a tool of propaganda? I'm still <laughs> um, trying to understand this. And last week, uh, the words were raided. Um, the words... Uh, went to our mother and the other political women's prisoners room and uh, they took everything which has handwritten on them including defense texts. So which mean violation of right of defense and actually there is going to be a final hearing in January of my mother case so I don't know what will happen under these conditions. But yet, my mother, who still has traces on her body because of torture, always say that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Today, she is in prison again, but her belief in peace and equality and failing. She is uh, still working for uh, women and she's still feminist activist from there. And she wrote a book which named uh, Purple Color of Kurdish Movement. And maybe I have to say something about me. <laughs> I always impressed by my mother. I was so lucky that I have a mother who is feminist and so strong woman. And I'm trying to follow her footsteps as a young Kurdish woman. I'm continue human rights law master program, but besides I'm feminist and peace activist. Just before pandemic, 
uh, I was doing a peace workshops in different cities with different group of people, uh, which aim to bring people who has different background together and open area for talking, facing about our past, uh, now and our common issues. And also occasionally I'm doing interview with women political prisoners. Um, I want to draw attention on the women political prisoners because unfortunately, uh, most of the human rights NGOs and activists mostly care about on male political prisoners. Uh, so this is another issue that I'm trying to struggling with it. On the other hand, I'm working with film more and we are doing uh, women film festivals and producing women movies. And uh, this year now we are shooting a documentary about seven different local politi politicians, women politicians in different cities. And I recorded, I shot it and followed the local political uh, women from the Arbaker. I hope you can see it soon. And at the same time, my mother wrote a film script from the prison, uh, which is also about Kurdish women women's uh, struggle. And I hope that I'm going to shoot that movie too. I already started working on it. So yeah, I think these are for now what I can say. Maybe we can continue with question and answer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Evin Khan. Um, yes, we can do question and answer once all the speakers have spoken. And I'm sure they have loads of questions and really interested about this movie script as well. Um